I remember back in the third grade when our teacher used to have us compete in these little mental math championships and the room would just buzz with excitement, maybe even shock if a girl was one of the finalists. I remember seeing all the girls scramble to have as many boys as possible in their groups and on their projects because it was an established fact that they were smarter. A question a lot of people seem to be asking themselves when they step into today's science classrooms is, where are all the girls? And truly, where are they? Why is it that we've never lived in a world more equal, with a more overwhelmingly positive attitude regarding girls that choose to pursue these career paths, and yet we still see so few girls in science? What gives? Could it be that we're all just fighting biology, that women and girls just aren't naturally interested in the sciences? It may be what these shallow statements would have you believe, but it could not be further from the truth. The social conditioning of young girls is responsible. That's what's keeping science a boys' club. Because while we've made impressive and important strides for gender equality politically, we have yet to address the world on a more human level. The subconscious mind is still untapped, and the subconscious mind is a mystifying thing. I've known I've wanted to go into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is, for those of us without a lot of time to waste, often abbreviated STEM, since I looked up at the night sky for the first time, since I first saw a computer code run and produce the correct result, since I first heard that everything around me is actually made of teeny tiny particles fussing around, I was and remain a stubborn little girl. I was going to be a scientist, and there was absolutely nobody that could stop me. Back then, when my days were spent reciting the 12 times tables in a third grade classroom, there were a lot of girls like me. But I watched them retreat and eventually disappear from the scene. Not all of them but enough, too many. We begin a socialization process, more or less the minute we are born. This socialization process shapes the very essence of who we are and goes on to become who we end up developing, our interests and careers as adults. That is, dare I say, very unfortunate for our girls. It's unfortunate because we, as a collective, still don't know how to imagine a female scientist without her being a specifically female scientist. We don't know how to let the two ideas coexist. As children, we're born with these little internal scientists. They're fierce and curious and want to explore the world. I mean, you've all witnessed it. Babies will stick their fingers in just about everything put just about anything into their mouths, experiment with every tangible object, and question why until you're left exhausted. Something very unfortunate seems to happen with our girls, though. This internal scientist seems to shrink as time goes on. But why? Haven't we all accepted the fact that there is such a thing as a female scientist? Sure but we haven't accepted the fact that it exists without force. So basically, women can be scientists, but not in the same way that men just naturally are. Women can be scientists, but then they must first be tricked into liking it. When you browse a toy store today, you'll notice that there has been a significant increase in the STEM equipment and toy sets marketed specifically at young girls. And you'd think this is excellent. But then you start reading the labels, the motifs, you start paying attention to the actual play aspects of the toys. Manicure sets with little Erlenmeyer flasks as containers. Water, soluble makeup. From the minute girls can walk, they're told that they too can be scientists. 
just so long as that science is pretty and sparkly. We feel the need to modify scientific exploration and curiosity in order to appeal to young girls. So then this internal scientist that girls are born with is crushed by the force of our own subconscious. Isn't that kind of a bummer? We're all still quite the sexists deep down. Our ancient, hard-to-program brains still don't know how to make the word scientist neutral. And on our girls, we pile a heap of societal pressures and expectations. What ends up happening is that these young girls that were initially looking up with a nice sky in awe or staring at a fascinating chemical reaction begin to internalize this damaging idea that you have to give up every other aspect of your personality. Be stone cold, cutthroat, and essentially make peace with complete solitude for all of eternity if you want to be successful. Because what you're trying to do isn't what girls do. The minute you become a scientist is the minute you stop being a girl. And it's no secret that young girls are taught to strive for femininity. Within all of us is this deeply embedded desire to be a good lady. And so for a lot of girls to embrace scientific curiosity would mean to abandon all other parts of their personality and completely defy the status quo. I can guarantee that there are exhausted parents staring right back at me right now. I mean, with holidays and birthdays coming up, I've just told you that the pink makeup-themed science kit that you undoubtedly splurged on is actually super counterproductive. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you for your effort. I really see it. But what do we do about this social conditioning, this banishing of young girls from STEM? I really wish the problem was more concrete. I sort of wish there were laws that we could change or bans that we could lift, some sort of clear barrier that we could just pierce through. Unfortunately, the problem has proven itself a lot more complex. Still, I hope that we as a collective can start somewhere, like with my very own three-step initiative. The three-step initiative tackles the world on three different levels. The outside, the local, and the internal. The first step is a call to action to all of you, the outside. Do the uncomfortable. Challenge what we don't often realize we need to be challenging. Out and about and hear the words female scientist? Correct it. Tell them, no, she's just a scientist. If you see the NASA merchandise hanging at a boy's section in the clothing store, grab a couple of hangers and put them in the girl section. If you're a teacher assigning a project that has to do with some nitty-gritty technology, put the girls in charge of the electrical circuits instead of just the top coat. Step two is a call to action to the local, the families of little scientists. Make her feel normal, not exceptional or groundbreaking, just normal. <laughs> That way, you're telling her that this interest is something that is within reach, something she already has the natural prerequisites for. Because if you tell her that her interest is inspiring, she's going to remember that first and foremost when the science gets hard. And trust me, it will. Her interest is inspiring because it's not what girls typically do. And so maybe all this hard work and dedication is in vain and she should just give up. And step three, perhaps the most difficult and invasive call to action out of all of them, the internal. A call to action to all of my fellow girls going into STEM. When you hit that famous wall, when you just can't get the code to compile, when you get lost in pages of kinematic equations that just spit out a nonsensical answer, when the titration goes dark pink, just one too many times. When you feel your most stupid and your most failed, ask yourself, would a guy have the courage 
nay, the self-assurance to stubbornly just keep pushing? Because the answer tends to be, oh yeah, most definitely. And so I'm just going to admit defeat? That tends to be quite the push for me. In a few years, I'm supposed to walk into a university. I want to see more girls around me, but I fear I can't do that with the world pushing back against me. So, on behalf of every girl that's ever been condescended, iced out, every girl who's ever had her STEM aspirations conditioned out of her, and certainly on behalf of every girl who's ever received a makeup kit with a molecule glued on the packaging to encourage her into science, <laughs> I wish to plant this in your mind. Science is neutral, and women are multidimensional creatures that can have both a scientific profession and other interests alongside it. We won't submit to just caricatures. So then, let's end the deceptive conditioning and embrace our little girls running around with both their calculators and their teddy bears. Because the future of science will thank us. Thank you. <laughs>